All right, now we're going to look at this problem 30 and 31, which will be the protocol layers and the end-to-end -end delay. Now, before we begin, I should say that you have, you need to have the textbook out so that you can help, and you should have watched the video that the professor left us with how I could answer, like, the assignment three questions, because I watched the video and I'm using the textbook one. So... So those of you who don't know or don't have the textbook yet, you can watch the video and explain it all. All right, for problem 30. Now this will be in the textbook. Considering the airline travel and all the in our discussion of layering section 1.5 and the addition of header to protocol data unit as they flow down the protocol stack, is there an equivalent notion of header information that is added to patents in the bagot as they move down the airline protocol? Okay. Now, as we see in this graph, they're asking us um, if we could change the information like the bag, passenger and baggage in the airline protocols. And as we see in the video, is that yes, we can change a layer, but by the implementation of the service provider, if you already see it. As long as the layer provides the same services from the from the layer above it and below it, basically the other layer. If you change one layer, oh, the remainder of the system from the will remain unchanged. So in other words, this will not affect the system, um, the rest of the system to be uh, stuck or queued or delayed, if you understand. Now, for problem 30, we have to solve it on our own. Okay. In modern packed switch network, including the internet, the source holds segments long application layer messages, for example, an image or a music file, into smaller packet, send the packet into the network. The receiver then reassembles the packet into the original message. We refer to this part as a message segmentation. Figure 1.27 illustrates the end to end transport of a message with and without message segmentation. Consider a message that is 8 times 10 to the power 6 bits long. That is to be sent from source to destination figure 1.2. Suppose each link in the figure 2 M MBPS. Ignore propagation, queuing, and processing delay. Okay, now let's read part A. Considering sending the message from source to destination without message segmentation. How long does it take to move the message from the source hole to the first packet switch? Keep in mind that each switch uses store and forward packet switching. What is the total time to move the message from source host to destination? So in other words, from source to the destination. So, in the graph of that is shown in 1.27, it was shown in the 1.27, before I begin, if you hear the telephone, I'm using it. 1.2 Come on, come on. Ah, uh, here it is. Now, it will show us, like, the two computers, the packet switch, like, which is the message, like, in, in A and in the B. Okay, so, in this one, they're giving us uh, the, some hints on how we can proceed. So we we put in 8 times 10 to the power 6, we divide by the 2, which then we multiply times 10 to the power 6, and that will give it to 4 seconds. And then for the storing forward, they switch, which will be the total time to move the message from the source to the destination, as asked in the question above, which you multiply 4 seconds times 3 halves, because you count like how many halves it would be from moving the package, which would be... Uh, like in shown B, and that will give you 12 seconds. Okay, now part B. Now, suppose that the message is examined into 800 packets, with each packet being 10,000 bits long. How long does it take to move the first packet from source host to the first switch? When the first packet being sent from the first switch to the second, the second packet is being sent from the source host to the first switch. At what time will the second packet be fully received at the first switch? Okay, now in asking numbers like the first pack and the second pack. Now we do in part one and part B. So for to solve the time to send the first packet 
from sword to the first package switch. Now we'll see then. Which you multiply this by uh, 1, which will be the first packet, times 10 to the power 4, which will be the 4 seconds, the 4 of everything, and then you divide this by 2, which will be the second packet, then you multiply 10 to the power 6, which we did in the part A, and you get 5 mil milliseconds. Okay, now we do part 2 or part B. Time at which second packet is received from the first switch equal to time at which first packet received from the second switch. All right, so then here are the two packets, the first packet and the second packet, asking for both time. Okay, so then we multiply this by 2 times 5, and the 5 will be the milliseconds, which is then part B, and the 2 is the second pack, and then you get 10 milliseconds, if you understand. Now... Let's move on to the rest of the question. And see for problem day one, how long does it take to move the file from source hole to destination hole when method segmentation used? Compare the result with your answer in part A and comment. So then we got a comment in part A. Okay, so in C, time at which first pack is with seven destination. So then we multiply five milliseconds with the three hops, like in the show, we get 50 milliseconds. After this, every first packet will be received, thus leaving the time for the last packet to be received, which um, we're going to get uh, 800. So then we put 50 millisecond plus 799, I believe, and then we time 5 millisecond. So then, in order to do that, you need to do like for 15, you need to run millisecond form and 5 in the millisecond form, and then you will get 4.01 seconds. And in part 2 of C, now this will be resulting in a delay when using the method segmentation. So, if I can probably give them an estimate like the error, a delay, that would be like a one third, I believe. Now, for part, now for D, in addition to reducing the delay, what are the reasons to use method segmentation? Ah, one of the advantages of using it, okay. For the first reason to use the message segmentation, that it helps improve the security when transporting the message from the sender to the receiver. And the other reason would be in, in the encapsulation protocol of large packets, meaning you could, um, the transportation of the pack of large packets, such as a video. So, then to accommodate the transportation of the message from the encapsulation, encapsulation part would be the transportation. And from this process, they can detect if there are any errors in the message being sent to the receiver. Like, uh, if the message has been changed, they can detect it and try to uh, give you like a message, like, a, how should I say? Um, basically, like an email in the in the gunman email. Like, if we send in the and we try to send this to the receiver of a person, of a packet. And then it shows us the error that this person uh, does not exist. And the packet will be, um, they will detect if, the, if it's been changed or not, basically. Okay. And for E, in problem day one is that they want to ask us about the disadvantage of the message segmentation. Now, the first disadvantage is that the packets will be put in sequence once they arrive at the destination, which means that they are arranged to arrive at range. They're not rearranged, basically. And then the messages are divided into smaller packets, which means you have to wait for the message to be complete from the small pack to be in like in order so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you and have a good night